We're not apenas. asking to anyone to say yes, the Malvinas or Argentinas. We're asking for no more, no less than to sit down at a table and talk. Get away from her, you bitch! To the Prime Minister, question number one, Mr. Patrick Thompson. Mr. Speaker, sir, this morning I had meetings with ministerial colleagues and others. In addition to my duties in this house, I shall be having further meetings later today. Mr. Thompson! Mr. Speaker, can my right honourable friend confirm that the rebate system for the new community charge is that the rebate system for the new community charge is considerably more generous than the old rate rebate is particularly more generous than the old rebate particularly for those households in the lowest income band who should see, on average, a reduction of 26% in the proportion of their income that they pay to local government. And does my right honourable friend agree that they will only gain this benefit if local authorities like Norwich City Council resist the temptation to raise the level of charge and control their expenditure firmly and efficiently? Uh, yes, Mr Speaker. I'm Order. confirmed that households in the lowest income band will see a lower proportion of their income paid to local authorities, and that's because community charge benefits are more generous than rate rebates were, and because many of the single adult households who benefit from the change are pensioners or other on low incomes. With regard to the second part of my honourable friend's questions, I agree that local authorities should make strenuous efforts to keep their expenditure down. It is reported that some, in fact, have nevertheless suggested a figure of £370 or more for a community charge. If we had retained domestic rates instead of the present community charge, that would have led to an increase in domestic rates of 35%, which is totally unacceptable. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, when people live in a Tory district, in a Tory county, under a Tory government, whom do they blame for their very high poll tax? Yeah. All local authorities, whatever their political complexion, should strain, should strain to keep down their public expenditure so they can keep down their community charge. Far more Labour local authorities are extravagant and in the highest community charge than there are Conservative authorities. Speaker, why does the Prime Minister try to take such refuge in fiction? Doesn't she realise... Doesn't she realise there are plenty, there are plenty of people on her own back benches and in her own party who could tell her that this whole arrangement was a fairy story from the start, to uh, to use the words of her honourable friend from Spellthorn. Is this why just one authority in the whole country has been able to set its poll tax at or below the specified government level? Not all of the community charges have been set. But we are perfectly well aware from the answer I gave previously that some authorities are taking refuge in the change to have higher expenditure and therefore, and therefore, Order. and therefore it is our intention when the community charge is finally set to say precisely what the increase would have been in domestic rates had that taken the place of the community charge so that local people can judge whether their authority has been wise or whether it's been just plain extravagant, they will find that far more Labour authorities and those over no, under no overall control will have far higher spending than most Conservative authorities. Mr Speaker, doesn't the Prime Minister yet understand that people are not going to pay what might have been, they're going to pay the much higher charges inflicted upon them by her and her government. Yeah. No, Mr. Speaker. 
the right honourable gentleman knows that the majority of local authority spending is met by the taxpayer and by business. The rest is by the community charge payer and when the councils load extra expenditure on it's borne by the community charge payer. So in fact, so in fact, people will be able to see which are the most extravagant authorities. In any case, they'll all prefer the community charge to Labour's roof tax. Yes. Alan Amos. My honourable friend's reply, which I gave some moments ago. Amos, uh, would my right honourable friend persist in her determination to lift the voluntary ban on investment in South Africa? And will she confirm that other countries are currently investing in South Africa? Uh, Mr. Speaker, as my honourable friend knows, uh, President de Klerk has taken fundamental decisions which have gone further in the direction of ending apartheid than any other previous government, and he is determined to end it. Under such circumstances and the actions he's taken, we believe it is right, step by step, to lift some of the sanctions, in particular the voluntary ones. With regard to the ban on investment, six other countries in the community have a voluntary ban. We are not the only country to have a voluntary ban, and we're not suggesting lifting those sanctions which are enforced by order. As my honourable friend knows, it's not possible to do anything about investment reinvested from profit in South Africa, and sometimes it has a compound nature, sometimes within South Africa and without. He will, of course, be aware that BMW South Africa of course be aware that BMW South Africa have just announced the latest £25 million instalment of a five-year investment program worth £120 million. This does mean, this does mean jobs and security and an improvement in living standards for the workforce and should be welcomed. Alan Michael. I refer the honourable gentleman to reply which I gave some moments ago. Alan Michael. Speaker. Would the Prime Minister tell us what advice she has for her honourable friend, the member for Winchester? <laughs> yeah. 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 Mr. Speaker, Order. the report of the Select Committee is a serious one and must be considered very carefully, and also it will be a matter for my honourable friend who also wish to consider what it says very carefully. My right honourable friend, the Lord President, will in due course say when he thinks in, 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 in consultation with others the report should be debated. I would think it would be courteous to leave it at that. Why did I give some members to yeah. To turn his spell up. Mr. Speaker, would my, would my right honourable friend tell us what has gone wrong with the arithmetic relating to the community charge? Yeah. How can it be? Order, order. Mr. Speller. How, how can it how can it be that in low spending, low rateable value uh, authorities such as North Devon and Mid Devon, count councils in the past levied less than £190 per adult are now having to levy over £300 per individual And can we, can we not put the fault of this at those who are levying the charge, not those who are organising the government? The figure which my honourable friend mentions of £300 for community charge in North and Mid Devon is based on an increase of over 19% in spending by the County Council and 21% and 15% increase for North and Mid Devon respectively. If the authorities continue their present pattern of spending, the community charge would be £210 in North Devon and £220 in Mid Devon. And I hope that Conservative authorities will maintain their present tradition of prudent budgeting and well-managed yeah. services. Penny Ashton. Speaker, um, is the, uh, will the Prime Minister tell the House whether inflation is still to be the judge and jury of her government. If so, how does she explain the fact that Britain's inflation 
has now been higher than the European average for eight out of her 11 years, higher than the OECD average for nine out of her 11 years, and higher than any of our industrial competitors for 11 out of her 11 years. Does she realize that if inflation is to be the judge and mortgage misery is the charge, then with that record, there's only one verdict. Guilty, guilty and guilty. The present inflation rate based on the RPI is 7.7, was low for the Labour government, which his Liberals supported. Low for the Labour government, which his bench chose to support year after year. For us, it is high, and it remains our priority to get it down. May I point out to the right honourable gentleman that this country's record on increasing jobs and creating jobs, and therefore the low level of unemployment at 5.7%, is lower than almost any other country in the community. Yeah. To Michael Jack. I refer my honourable friend to the reply which I gave some... To Jack. Mr Speaker, can my right honourable friend confirm that her government would never countenance following policies that would impose a 59.5% tax rate on wage and salary earners in this country. And has she, Mr Speaker, had a chance to see recent newspaper reports which indicate that a tax rate of 59.5% is precisely that being pursued by the opposition? Yeah. 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 Mr Speaker, I confirm that we should never think of putting up a tax rate of 59.5%. Uh, not in any way we should continue the policies of lower taxation which has brought far extra enterprise, has brought more jobs and a higher standard of living to this country than it has ever known before. And if I refer my honourable friend to the report on social trends and honourable members opposite, may I point out that under our policies the top 10% of taxpayers contributed not only a larger amount to the Exchequer, but contributed 40% to the yield of income tax. The top 10% of taxpayers contributed 40% to the yield of income tax, and that is on the policy of reducing taxation and the incentives it gives. Mr. David Talland. I defer the honourable gentleman to the reply which I gave some moments ago. Talland. Does the Prime Minister believe there's any connection whatsoever between the fact that homelessness increased by 45% between the, the end of 1986 and the end of 1988, and the fact that under her government, council house building has fallen from 111,000 a year in the 1970s to only 21,000 per year in the 1980s? Is, is this not an indication that this government lacks any concern whatsoever for the needs of those people at the lower end of the incomes? It has been our policy to encourage home ownership, and the home ownership has increased from some, from some, Order. From some 11 and a half million homes owner occupied to some 15 million. And so many people have had a chance under us that they would never have had with a Labour government. With regard to homelessness, my right honourable friend announced an extra £250 million, in fact, to help to help find homes for the homeless and also over the next two years, an increase for money from the Housing Corporation for housing associations, rising from something like 800 million at present to 1,700 million in the next two to three years. That is a very large allocation of taxpayers' money towards alleviating homelessness. Mr. Christopher Butler. Honourable friends, reply which I gave some moments ago. Butler. The right honourable friend shot that Ilya can only produce 137 A-level students in French across the whole of London. Doesn't this indicate that years of big spending and comprehensive schools don't necessarily produce the goods? Yes, Mr. Speaker, I agree with my honourable friend. Big spending does not necessarily produce the best educational results, and Ilya is proof positive of that. I hope that when Ilya is finally disbanded very soon, that the inner London, ed, that the separate uh, district education authorities will have a very much better record, the lower level of expenditure than Ilya has managed. Tommy Graham. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Prime Minister aware that over a half a million people in Scotland can't pay the poll tax, and yet in yesterday's time it showed Tory Council going to increase a huge poll tax burden on the people that they represent. How many people in the Tory Shire won't be able to pay the poll tax, and how much does this do to increase inflation? Mr. Speaker, bearing in mind that the community charge in Scotland, bearing in mind Order. that the community charge in Scotland meets only 14% of the expenditure of local authorities, and that Scotland's earnings are among about the fourth highest in the United yeah. Kingdom, it is not, I believe, that people cannot pay their community charge. It may be that some have been led not to pay it by the wrong advice of others.